So today, I'm going to show you how to create plots that look like this, through a process known as domain coloring. The idea is relatively straightforward. Let's say we have some sort of function, f of x equals x. Here, we would typically plot it in a fashion that you guys probably know pretty well. We have some sort of y-axis and some sort of x-axis, where we put the variable x on the x-axis and we put the output of the function on the y-axis. Then we simply plot the function some sort of linear operator that looks like this. Now, this is exactly what you would expect to see because X is purely within real space. However, what if instead of using X, again, which is purely in real space, we use another variable, Z, and we have the same function, F of Z is equal to Z. But in this case, Z is in complex space. And here I'm using this weird C to denote complex space. Well, this gets a little bit tricky because now both Z and the output of Z in here have a real and an imaginary component. Which means that in order to appropriately plot this, we're going to need essentially four dimensions. And if my YouTube comments have taught me anything, it's basically impossible to understand four dimensions in any intuitive way. So what exactly do we do? Well, we do kind of the same thing we did before. So first we draw some sort of two-dimensional grid. And on the x-axis, we put the real component to our input variable, z. On the y-axis, we then put the imaginary component of our input variable, z. Then we select some pixel. Any pixel really will work, but we'll choose this one right here, which we'll say is just one plus one imaginary. We're going to plug that pixel into our function. Again, f of z is equal to z. And we're going to get some sort of output variable. Again, we know the output variable is z, so I'm just going to write it here. Now we're going to show that output variable as equal to r e to the i theta. So this is a value where r is going to be equal to the complex magnitude, just the absolute value of z in this case. And theta is going to be equal to some sort of complex phase. So a tangent of, let's say, the imaginary component of z over the real component. By plotting this in this way, we can then display this particular pixel's color based on the complex magnitude and phase. So if we just put an additional color bar in here, and we say this color bar is either RGB or let's say HSV, we can then say, for example, that the red element in here corresponds to the complex magnitude over here. And we could say that maybe the saturation or the green value here is the complex phase. Now, there's a bunch of wiggle room to what values you choose here, and there's a bunch of different ways in order to do domain coloring. So let's just go ahead and show you this very same function, f of z is equal to z, with RGB coloring. And it's going to look something like this. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is there's this very big phase discontinuity along the x-axis. You can see that the phase angle changes in red, and we have this 0 to 2 pi phase winding. Also, blue increases as we go further out because the magnitude increases as we go further out. Now, I do want to point out this phase discontinuity because I used it a lot in my thesis, and it's really, really cool. So let's just start moving on to the next function, which will be f of z is equal to z squared. Again, you see the phase discontinuity, but this time you see 2. It's now a 4 pi phase winding because the phase changes from 0 to 4 pi. So we see 2 0 to 2 pi phase windings. Again, we see the magnitude increasing as we go out, as you would expect. At this point, you might start to see a bit of a problem, right? With an RGB color scheme, it's actually kind of hard to see exactly what's going on, specifically because, well, this phase discontinuity is really weird looking. So what happens if we use HSV instead? Well, we'll get a plot that looks something like this. Now, this plot is in some ways easier to read and in some ways harder to read. It's way prettier to look at, but the issue is because the complex magnitude is increasing as we go further out and the saturation changes with the complex magnitude, the plot looks really washed out in the center here and then you start to see the color on the outside. Now, we definitely still see the 4 pi phase winding, right? It's red here and red here, blue here and blue here, but the plot's really hard to read. So what we'll do is we'll introduce some sort of shading function so that the saturation changes instead of from zero to whatever, x squared on the outside, it now changes with some sort of contour lines associated with it. So here we say between integer values, the saturation will change from zero to one, right? So it's washed out, then it's colored. It's washed out, then it's colored. Washed out and colored. Now we can still do better. Instead of having the contour here, 
change from 0 to 1, we can have it change from 0 0.5 to 1. And that will make it slightly easier to see the phase profile, which is usually what people want. Now there's one more thing people typically do with domain coloring, and that is to show the integer values of the output function. So let's go back to the function we were looking at before, f of z equals z. In this case, we get some sort of black grid on top of our domain colored image, right? And each of these lines correspond to some integer value of the output in either imaginary space for the horizontal lines or real space for the vertical lines here. Now, if we do the same for f of z is equal to z squared, we get a plot that looks something like this. And it's kind of hard to understand with all the black lines here, but trust me, you can actually plug in each pixel value if you want to confirm yourself. These black lines do correspond, again, to integer values in either the real or complex space of the output. So it all works as intended. And this would be our first real fully domain colored image that we've done with this method. There's a bunch of different ways in order to create domain colored images that look like this. There's a lot of wiggle room, a lot of different ways to make it. And I'm going to show on screen right now a bunch of different functions that we made on stream that I think look pretty cool. As always, there's more information available on the algorithm archive. Feel free to go there if you want to learn as much as you can about domain coloring. Granted, there's a lot we didn't cover, but hopefully that's, you know, a good seed, a good place to start with so you can learn more about the topic. Also, Twitch, Discord, GitHub sponsors, and GitHub links, they're, they're all in the description. Feel free to check it out. Again, I chose GitHub sponsors over Patreon just because this is a programming project, but I felt that GitHub sponsors was slightly better than Patreon for this purpose. Outside of that, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.